Every morning, the rising sun brings life to a new day. The changing of the leaves tells me summer has come to an end and the new season is about to begin. For big game animals such as elk and moose, September and October brings to life a new breeding season. Temperatures here in Alberta can still be in the teens. The agricultural lands have been harvested and the native grasses are starting to dry up. For a whitetail buck, this is not yet breeding season. This time is spent in the feed fields putting on fat reserves in anticipation for the rut to begin. In the Rocky Mountains of Alberta, November is usually met with full winter conditions. Temperatures plummet and bone chilling winds blow off the mountains, dropping temperatures from minus 20 to minus 30 degrees Celsius. For a whitetail hunter here in Alberta, these are perfect conditions. This is what I've been waiting for all season. The deer are really starting to move. The telltale signs that the rut's about to explode is evident in every piece of whitetail bush in the province. As bucks map out rub lines to lay claim to their territories and find receptive does. I have put in my time. I have a plan. Tomorrow morning is opening day. Let the chase begin. It takes preparation, dedication, and determination to find and harvest a big mature buck. For me, that comes pretty easy. Filming an entire show about it took me three bucks and three years. Here's my story. So my main strategy for finding big bucks is to hunt the does. I get great results if I locate where the does are feeding and bedding during the rut. If there are good bucks in the area, it's just a matter of putting in your time to get a look at one. I had scouted a ton, so I was ready to try and make it happen. We'll get tucked down in this fence row and we have deer coming off these fields and down and they're trying to get into these feed fields behind us. So we're hoping that we can get an interception coming across uh, these it's full rut bucks are moving heavy and there's a lot of does feeding in this field uh, but 
we really need to be in that intersection spot to, to pick up on one of these bucks. That evening I watched a couple smaller bucks dog and does, but uneventful for anything with any size. There were a ton of does feeding in the field, so I was confident I was in a good spot to get a look at a great mature buck. The very next morning, there he was, just as I had hoped. He was in the field tending a doe, and once again, my strategy of sitting on the does put me in front of this beauty of a deer. This was only my second sit. I hadn't even put in three hours total sit time, and here's a big mature buck feeding away with this hot doe. I've got all the time in the world to make this shot. Doesn't get any better than that. He was at 386 yards. I was laying down comfortable and steady. All I needed was for him to stop. <laughs> With the pull of the trigger, my 2010 season was over. I have a great Alberta whitetail on the ground, and I couldn't be happier. As a 25 year season hunter, I had the shot, and I took it. As a rookie producer with the passion of making a hunting show, I just ended the role of the main actor. The show was over, and I didn't have the footage to put together a three minute commercial. I didn't realize it then, but I had 365 days to look at these antlers and figure out the remaining 27 minutes. Twenty eleven was a long year. The mistakes I made were a major setback, but in my mind, this was going to be easy. Just a small oversight on my part. I know how to hunt. That's the hard part. All I have to do is film it, rearrange the footage on the editing suite, and for sure, I will have a hit TV show. Winter came and went, as did the spring. I worked all summer in my mind and came up with a perfect plan. I would start filming the show the first day of September. That way, I would have all kinds of time to gather footage. This was going to be awesome. Well, this is a little unusual for me to be hunting whitetail this early in the season. It's only three days into the 2011 hunting season here in Alberta. And uh, we got some real good whitetails coming into this field still in velvet. Never shot a velvet buck before. Really want one. And there's a really good decent 150 class uh, deer in here so give her a try we just got uh, into stand and little buck popped up already just hope waited out they've been coming in five or six o'clock so this is about the quickest and best setup we could get in here we brought this blind in this afternoon brushed it in a little bit hopefully it's gonna work we just seen these big bucks coming in here the last couple of days so give her a try I felt really good about my setup. Strategy in September is not like in November. I'm not hunting the does. I'm relying on a food source. In this case, a luscious second growth hay field. I've glassed several bucks using this field the past few weeks. And I've made an educated guess as to where they're coming out. Just as I had watched the previous few days, a buck appeared right on schedule. There was 200 yards of bush line the bucks were using to enter the field. My guess was off by 20 yards. I was planted in the hot seat at the head of the dinner table. To be honest, when we set up here, I never thought I would get anywhere near these bucks for a bow shot. My goal was to start to build the show story with some close encounters and some live animal footage. But just like that, I was faced with the fact that this may actually happen right here, right today. I was still okay. I knew right away that this was a buck I would let walk. He was at 25 yards. These are the close encounters videographers dream of. Velvet bucks are rarely seen. My mind was racing a thousand miles an hour. As the camera rolled, I was piecing together the part of the script that this actor was providing. I was right on cue this year. 
This type of footage in the early season will make the storyline, the B-roll in between, and the finale in November with the falling of a giant in the rut. Then I looked to my left. I hadn't seen the other bucks jump the fence into the field. And there he was, the velvet buck that had glass for days. The buck almost any hunter would love to take. A buck in velvet is a trophy in itself, and he was standing in close bow range. This was it. The table was set. I did everything right as a hunter to get to this point. But as he walked around out front of me, I was faced with the moment of truth. I had already waited another year with a lack of footage for a show. And if I sent an arrow through this buck, I will have sold my soul to the same demon. My mind says pass. But my arm slowly drew the string back to my cheek. One question flashed through my mind as I looked through my peep sight and settled the little red pin on his chest. Am I a hunter or am I a videographer? Drill them, dude. I am a hunter. This is what I train for. This is what I live for. To follow my strategies and with the weapon of choice, execute my shot with the accuracy of a sniper. I know what my choice has done, and I'm okay with it. Today I have achieved another milestone in my hunting career. My wall will now boast the head of a whitetail buck in velvet, a trophy that I thought would elude me. The show will have to wait. I will take this year again to better my skills as a producer and as an editor. Hunting is my passion. The video is my dream. This is the chase that I live for. It's funny how all things work out. I'd only hunted a total of two days the past two years and have taken two great bucks. But the lack of footage for a show two years running? Why is that? Well, it's because I was nowhere near being a hunting show producer. I guess it was in my mind that all I have to do is have the camera rolling while I was out hunting and download the entire show when I get back. I now realize the animals were not producing a show. I have to produce it. I have to tell the story. Otherwise, all I'm producing is a whole lot of nothing. I got the ball rolling right away in the summertime. To be a better hunter, I need to fully understand my hunting areas. To be a better producer, I have to chase after bigger and better footage. A bird's eye view will help with both. Topo mats work well, but being able to actually fly and get a real understanding of the lay of the land and how and where animals are moving and bedding is second to none. The information I gathered from this flight really helped see the actual beauty of Alberta from the air was breathtaking. The rolling foothills extend for miles and hold world-class big game animals. It's a real privilege to be able to hunt here. It's another thing to be able to call it home. This year I was back to concentrating fully on the November rut. I was real fortunate to seal the deal on a new piece of property for this year. It was a large chunk of land nestled against the slopes of the Rocky Mountains. I have glassed and admired this property from a distance for a few years. I know that there are a ton of does that use this area as home. I have witnessed as many as 60 deer feeding in this field during the rut and I have laid eyes on some terrific bucks. You know sometimes hunting a new piece of property scares me a bit just because I haven't been able to see how the deer are really moving. I think here my best bet is to start with the feed and hopefully I'll be able to sit and watch some good movement. I mean for whitetails. The strategy is pretty simple, hunt the bedding or hunt the feed. At least if I start with the feed, I'll be able to get a bit of an inventory and hopefully find a good one. Once I find them, I'll pretty much have to wing it. Now I'm going to push all in on the feed. Western Alberta does not produce much in variety for field crops. Hay is pretty much the crop of choice. Cattle is the industry here and ranchers rely heavily on producing their own hay to feed their herds and cut costs at the bottom line. In August, the hay is harvested, but the short growing season does not allow for a second cut. Deer take advantage of the lush second growth. It will sustain them through the long cold winter months. This is the stage for my strategy. I will sit the feeding area. When the November temperatures plummet, I know the does and fawns cannot bed all day. They have to eat to stay warm. Food is their fuel for heat. Does will often travel back and forth to feed all day during the rut. This fact is the demise of many bucks. 
I will use my experience to put myself in the best position possible, and hopefully, the ladies will take care of the rest. The first night there were does in the fields right away. We watched them well into prime time. No bucks. But that's okay. 35 does in the field, we were right on track. But as it turns out, for the next few days, we did not see a single buck. I knew there had to be bucks with this many does. We just weren't seeing them in the daylight hours. I figured we have to make the move to the bedding area, catch them as they staged to go to the field. That's where we would find them. First night in our, our blind that we brought in this afternoon, I thought we had it right with our first setup in the field because we've been watching so many deer in that field and in early November we did see bucks coming into the field 45 50 does per night but we've been sitting it the last week morning and night and we have not seen bucks it's every year we do get a little bit of a lockdown uh, but we just haven't been seeing bucks in the field at all some little spikes and stuff so today we brought the little camper on the trailer and brushed it all in for our shooting blind and I'm hoping that these bucks are in this timber. Uh, we're seeing lots of sign in here. Like I say, I thought we were going to be able to get it done on the field with all those does out there. But they're just not coming out. I think they're moving at night. So hopefully this is the setup. We got the cut line here, which I did a scent drag in on the way in. And we have this clearing here that, you know, it's it's 100 150 in most spots so with a muzzle loader we're looking really good for a shot on there gonna try some rattling and stuff and see if we can get some things rattled up but I'm from what it looks like in this snow uh, there's some good trails going back and forth there was does in here this afternoon when we came and I know that those does are bedding in here so I, I think the bucks are just staying in this bedding area with these does until after dark and we're not seeing them so hopefully this setup works so this setup was a great spot for the muzzleloader it is my favorite gun and I didn't use it last year so this was a great opportunity as soon as I got settled in I started a series of rattles and sure enough this little buck appeared he was real curious he just wanted to know what all the commotion was the rest of the night all I saw was a couple of does. As a matter of fact, for the next two weeks, all I saw was this little buck. And of course, every night, all the does heading to the feed field. I can tell you, I was really starting to doubt my decision, so I packed up the blind and headed back to the field. I could not believe, with the rut in full swing and this many does, I was not seeing any good bucks. For the first time in three years, I was starting to think this wasn't gonna happen. For a third year, I would be skunked on producing a hunting show. I was getting the feeling of doubts from people around me, and heck, I was even starting to doubt myself. Maybe I am just not cut out to produce a show, but giving up just isn't in my character. Thankfully, it isn't in a buck's character either, because on a foggy, cold evening, this buck was not taking no for an answer. For the first time in 17 days, I was looking through the fog at a great whitetail buck. He had answered the curtain call. It was now my job to take over the stage. Yeah, bail out, bail out the door, hurry up, just. I wasn't taking any chances. I left my muzzle loader and grabbed my rifle. I wasn't out of the woods yet. He was 300 yards out and I needed him closer. The fog was just too thick and it wasn't a safe shot. I had to make him think that there was another buck here trying to steal his show. I let out a few grunts. He immediately accepted the challenge. Nobody was going to steal his thunder. As he came in, I was getting set for what felt like the shot of my life. When he hit the 100 yard mark, it was time to drop the curtain.
it was over. As I walked, I thanked the people who support me. And if it wasn't for the doubters, I would have never strived to improve. The chase for the this year's whitetail is now over for me. That is a good, respectable Alberta whitetail. I have no problem putting my tag on that deer right there. That is fantastic. This started 17 days ago, sitting for these whitetails. I mean, we've been seeing a few smaller bucks, but it's been a lockdown. And uh, there's only there's only a week left in November. And, you know, I have no, pr this is a great buck. He's broke off here, but that's no matter to me. We are all about the chase, and this has been 17 days of just a fantastic chase for this whitetail. We have been in the, the bedding area. We have been on the food plot. And I decided yesterday to sit right on the transition of it and hoping that the afternoon hunt was gonna be the hunt for us. And we knew that there was a weather change coming in and they, it was great. You know, I said this afternoon, this is gonna make something happen tonight, and it did. They came out pretty early, and this buck was just hot on that doe. I, I never thought we were gonna get him. This this fog, hoarfrost set in. He was at 300 yards, 250, 300 yards. I didn't think that we, it wasn't a safe shot. And we were gonna try to make a play on him by cutting the distance down in the open field. And it took one buck grunt. And he put his head up and turned and took a few steps towards me. I did another one and uh, he was on the trot. And we brought him right down to, was about 100 yards. Fantastic. That's a great way to end this year. For years, hunting has been my passion. To be able to share my story has been my dream. It has been a long road, and as the great John Fogarty would say, put me in coach, I'm ready to play.